Hola, mi clase. So we are doing our third section of 11.3 or 11, and it's about angle, angle similarity. We're gonna be talking about triangles. So I can use angle, angle similarity to find unknown measurements of side lengths of triangles. So we're gonna be talking about similar figures, which we had talked about in dilations. Remember dilations were similar figures, so they have the same shape, um, but may have different sizes. So remember that's what the dilation was. So we can just assume that all of our triangles, if they're similar, they're just some kind of dilation of each other. And then to be similar, two triangles are similar if their corresponding angles are congruent. Remember, corresponding means same place, same side type of situation. So as long as they have, um, I spelled, did I spell there wrong? Yes. Um, if they have angles that are the same, then they exactly the same, then, um, their lengths of the corresponding sides are proportional. So remember when we did dilations that we set up that ratio of comparing the uh, image to the original. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So we're gonna set up a ratio, but we're gonna have proportions. And so I'll show you what that looks like. So angle-angle similarity says that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. So they want us to prove or explain if these two triangles are in fact similar. So we do have two angles that are similar. So we can say angle B and the symbol for similar is just at a half and about sign. So this means uh, oh, actually, no, that means we don't want to say that they're similar. They are congruent. I'll show you that is similar, but actually they are congruent, right? What we're trying to do is prove that two of my angles are congruent. So angle B and angle E are congruent. We need two angles to be congruent. So what I have to do is figure out what this third angle is of each of these. So we know that all three angles of a triangle are 180. So if I have 100 of them, so right, 180, we can do arithmetic today, would be 80 and then minus 45. I'll let us do arithmetic today. So we get five, right? I wrote a four here, no, we get three. There we go, we get 35. Now, just to make sure, I'm gonna check it on this one, uh, 80 minus my 100 minus my 35. All right, I'm gonna borrow, I promise I'll write a seven this time. And there we go. I only have to prove that two of the angles are congruent, so we can actually then say that angle C is congruent to angle F. Since I have two angles that are congruent, I can then say triangle A, B, C, there's where I'm gonna put my similar symbol, is similar to triangle D, E, F. And I want the letters that are actually congruent in the same places. So A and D are both 45 degrees, so they need to go both be first. B and E are both 100, so they go second, and then C and F are the ones that are 35, so they go third. So your angles should then also be in the same position because that relationship's gonna be important for when we actually need to go find for side lengths. So this is just how we prove that they are in fact similar. So on the next example, I'm gonna show you why we need that. Okay, but we just need to prove that two angles are congruent, see, B, E, and C, F, and then the whole triangle is similar. So here's two triangles. We still have ABC, and now we have ADF. So I want you to see the really big triangle right here. Okay, ADF, and we have triangle ABC, this little one. So it says, while playing tennis, Matt is 12 meters from the net. Here's the net. He's 12 meters from it, which is 9 tenths meters high, and they label that for us. He needs to hit the ball so it just clears the net and lands six meters beyond. So that's what this line is, okay? So that the ball lands here. 
and they broke that for us. We want it six meters beyond the net. At what height should Matt hit the ball? So when should Matt hit the ball? What's this? See how it says H meters. Now, we first have to prove that this triangle, this really big one, and this little one are similar before we can decide, use information to find missing pieces. So it says both triangles contain A. Well, okay. So for triangle ADE and triangle ABC, angle A is in fact obviously congruent to angle A for both our triangles. Now, since angle ABC or even just angle, well, we technically need to say ABC, are right, and angle ADE is also a right angle, then they are congruent. So angle ABC is congruent to angle ADE. So now that I've proven I have two congruent angles, I've proven that triangle ABC and triangle ADE are similar. Okay, so you can then write it out or you can write triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE. And again, the angles that are congruent should be together. Okay, so A and A have to go first. Angle ABC is in the middle and angle ADE is technically in the middle. Now, this similarity is important because we are going to set up a proportion Okay, so what that means is that now that I know that the triangles are similar, it means that all of these measurements are proportional, meaning this triangle, this really big one, is some kind of dilation, or right, we enlarged this little one, or vice versa. We took the large one and we can dilate it and shrink it to this smaller one, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare one triangle to the other triangle. I always like to compare small to big, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, you compare the height of the small to the height of the large. And then we do the same thing here. We're gonna do the length of the small compared to the length of the large. And this is similar to what we did with dilations, except we only had one ratio. Small could be the dilated figure or the image, and large could be what we did when we had the original, right? So basically what I've just said is I took the large one and shrunk it to the small one. The reason we're setting up a proportion is because we need to use these ratios to find this missing piece, okay? And we know they have to be equal because remember with dilations, all of them had to be changed by the same amount. So we know the height of the small, it's nine tenths, right, meters. We do not know the height of the large, so that's where we're gonna put H meters. The length of the small one is six meters. Now, what you have to be really careful with this is the length of the large one. It is actually this entire thing, because remember, it's A to D. It's not A to B. B is not a part of my large triangle, so we need to find the measurement all the way across this. So we're actually gonna take six plus 12 to find the length of the large one, because it's the entire length from A to D. See, A to D. So our proportion is 9 tenths H equals 6 over 18. So we have to remember how to solve our proportion. This is where cross product comes in. We multiply diagonally like this. We get H times 6 is 6H. And then you can use your calculator. And we're going to do 9 tenths times 18. Okay. And that gets me 16 and 2 tenths. Okay, if you want to check me, do 9 tenths times 18 in your calculator. And then we just solve this like a one-step equation. We go divide by 6. So I'm going to divide by 6. And we get 
that the height of the large shape or the large triangle is 2 and 7 tenths. So at what height should Matt hit the ball? 2 and 7 tenths meters. I added too many E's in there, but so that's what this is. He should hit it as soon as it's at 2 and 7 tenths, and then it will perfectly cross over this and land 6 meters over here. Okay, we're going to do another one. So it says Rosie is building a wheelchair ramp that is 24 feet long. So this time they gave us the entire length, see how it's all the way across from here to here, and two feet high. She needs to install a vertical support piece eight feet from the end of the ramp. What is the, from the end of the ramp, what is the length of support piece? So just to support it, right, think about um, ramps and roofs and buildings, they need support pieces because if they're too long, it won't, it, things will start to bend, right? So we need a support piece eight feet from the bottom of the ramp and we don't know how tall it should be. So we can say that these two triangles are similar because they share this angle. It's very, it's identical to the last one we did and they are both right triangles. So that means these two angles are congruent, okay? So I've proven that they're similar. I can then set up by the proportion. So again, we're going to compare small to large. I'm going to do the same thing I did in the last one. So I'm going to do height compared to height and length compared to length. Okay. So the height of the small one is the one we don't know. So that's H feet over my height of my large one, two feet. The length of the small one is eight feet. And what's really nice about this one is we don't have to add anything. It's already done for me from here to here is 24 feet okay so the only time you have to add is if they give you from here to here right but because they gave me the entire thing i don't need to add so i'm just going to multiply across i'm going to get 24 h equals 16. i'm going to divide by 24 right one step equation and in my calculator, it gives me a really long repeating decimal, um, and that's okay. We, can, we know how to write those, so we would say H equals, and it's 6 tenths repeating feet. Um, another way you can do it is set it up as an actual fraction in the calculator, so if we use it in class. And so we can also say it's 2 thirds feet. So that's what how tall this is going to be to make sure it supports, okay, that's where it needs to be. All right, here are two triangles. I just want you to explain whether the triangles are similar. I'm going to have you do this one. I'm going to leave it blank, and it should look similar to, not this one, the first example we did, okay? You're proving that two equal, okay? Remember, I took it from 180. I'm going to leave this one blank. I'm going to see you guys do that. All right, so the things to remember is to set up a proportion, okay? I'm gonna type it out. So set up a proportion, okay? And it's gonna be small, let me underline that. We can always keep it the same way, height, small, I meant to underline that. Oh my gosh, of course it's giving me a hard time. You guys can't spell, can't do anything. There we go, equals, and we'll put length, small, because I'm doing it on the computer. And then here would go height, I put height, height, large, and then length, large. Ah, some more space there. All right, so here's your independent practice. I'm going to fill in some stuff because everyone always has a hard time filling this in, and then you're going to have to set it up using a proportion. So this is a lower cable meets the tree at a height of six feet. So here's my lower cable. So this is a tree. We are attaching cables to these, 
one from the very top and one from part way through. It says the lower cable meets the tree at a height of six feet. As we know, height is always here to here. Okay, so it's the lower cable, six feet goes right here. And extends out 16 feet from the base of the tree. So what they're saying is from the base of the tree to the lower cable is 16 feet. If the triangles are similar, how tall is the tree? So what you're trying to solve for is this, the large height. Okay, you're trying to solve, let's see if I can get a color in there that you guys can actually see, is this height right here, okay? The height of the tree. Okay, I'm gonna fill that in for you. So you have your small and your small, you need your height of your large and that you have the length of the large. It's already done for you all the way across, okay? So no adding in the, in the independent practice, okay? But make sure you put the height where it says height of large, okay? All right, until next time, adios.